Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to win a bar fight, guaranteed. So a lot of people have uh, really written in and they've been asking about the idea of dealing with people during social aggression. It really seems to be a hot topic with everybody that, uh, that's, that's on this channel. And I decided, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, delay any longer. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. So can you win a, win a bar fight? Yes, you absolutely can win a bar fight. And let's show you the latest winner that I found from about a week ago. Here it is. This guy's name is Ryan Whistler. And he absolutely won a bar fight. He uh, dominated the situation and um, got a huge result. So let's uh, let's play the video. Uh, the video is about what happened. And you get to see exactly what Ryan won. The Bloomington Jefferson community hurting after the death of its girls hockey coach. Mike Ryan was involved in a confrontation at a St. Paul bar on Saturday. It resulted in Ryan falling down a flight of stairs and hitting his head on the concrete below. A St. Paul man has been charged in his death, accused of delivering the punch that caused Ryan to fall. Now the community of Bloomington is coming together to remember their popular hockey coach. Here's Fox 9's Sarah Danik. Things feel a little more empty at the Bloomington Ice Garden. Initially. Okay, so what I want you to pay attention to is they're going to talk about the death of this hockey coach. And I want you to hear about what type of a man he was and, and all that, that stuff. And then there's, there's a reason I want you to hear all this because it's not the whole story. Yeah, I was in shock. I, in disbelief. I didn't really believe it. With the loss of 48-year-old Mike Ryan, head coach of the Jefferson High School girls hockey team. I always wanted to just do my best for him because... He definitely had a big impact on me and my hockey career. The husband and father died Sunday after being assaulted at a St. Paul bar on Saturday night. News that came as a shock to this tight-knit community. I couldn't believe it, especially we all said it's not, it's not our Mike Ryan. You know, it's not our Mike Ryan because he's so mild-mannered. I mean, I've never seen him raise his voice, you know, against anyone. Um, so yeah, it, it was a shock. Former Minnesota Coach of the Year Tom Satterdolan has known Mike since he was a child, describing his skill as a hockey player. Mike was part of his high school's state championship team and a collegiate athlete. But what Tom remembers most is Mike's character off the ice. We lost a tremendous husband and father to his two girls. There are signs of support around Bloomington. Hockey sticks out and more than $100,000 raised in one day through a GoFundMe page set up for Mike's wife and daughters. He just cared uh, about everybody. Uh, he wanted them to know that he cared. Hoping somehow Mike knows he was as loved as he made others feel. He just loved all of us so much, like more than we even knew. And even if we weren't there, like he just always expressed his love for us and always cared for us no matter what. In Bloomington, Sarah Danik, Fox 9. Okay, tragic, tragic ending to this man's life. And what do we hear about him? You know, mild-mannered, never rose his voice to anybody. Uh, just a great guy all around. So how could this happen? Okay. So then you got to look at the article that I found on this. And it tells a little bit more of the story. And as you can see, the title is Beloved Hockey Coach is Killed in a Bar in a Bar Fight After Allegedly Confronting a Man About Boorish Behavior. Boorish Behavior. So you go on in the article, there's a picture of the coach, and you find out that, that he was at a bar. Uh, again, these always happen at a bar. And he was in the bathroom. And when he was in the bathroom, he came across this guy. Ryan Whistler, our winner. And apparently this guy probably was agitated, drunk, whatever. COVID's made people crazy. And I guess some of the urinals were covered with cellophane uh, for social distancing. And I guess Ryan really had had it with this. And so I guess he makes a big show of it, punches a hole in the cellophane, starts to urinate in there while filming it um, with, his, uh, with his camera phone. And I guess it really agitated uh, the coach that was there, but he didn't say anything at this time. That's just it. But the key phrase here in this article is, <laughs> I'm going to just read it. 
that Ryan, the complainant, the, the complainant alleges, was agitated with Whistler, but didn't say anything to Whistler at the time. Later on, though, the complaint contends that Ryan purportedly called Whistler out for his behavior in the men's bathroom as they were leaving the bar, which led to a verbal confrontation. All right. And then we know what happened. Uh, they got into a fight. Uh, which, which is, this is another part of the interesting part. They got into this fight. You know, this guy confronts him. He grabs him. Uh, he punches the coach in the head, then kind of lets him go. Another guy, one of Ryan's friends, the, the winner, got between the two. And then Ryan gets away from him, grabs the coach again, and then pushes him. And that's when he goes down the stairs, brains himself, and dies. All right. So, is the coach blameless? Yes, he's blameless. But did he have the best strategy? Okay. And again, this man did not deserve this. I hope everybody understands what I'm doing. What we need to do is we need to take events like this so they don't happen to you. And what's the key here? He held it. You notice he, at the time when he saw him doing the act that was so boorish and that it really annoyed him. And the guy was probably loud and obnoxious and all that stuff. He didn't say anything. He controlled himself at that point. But as he's leaving, they're both leaving. He had to say it. He just had to let him know. His outrage was too much. And he had to let this guy know that he didn't appreciate his behavior. And then it led to this. Okay. This comes down to my whole situation where I tell you guys all the time, people I don't know, I find it a good policy to treat them like they're six seconds away from a shooting, you know, mass shooting. And I don't want to be the one to trigger it. So if I observe behavior like this, and it's not directed at me, it's just boorish behavior. What do I do? Well, I get the hell out of there and I don't say anything. There's no reason to, because you never know how the outcome is going to come. Look, I can tell you both men went into that bar that night with no intention of getting in a confrontation and one of them dying and the other one spending a good part of his life, the rest of his life in jail. But that's the outcome. Now, listen, this isn't a bait and switch. I told you I'm going to tell you how you can win a bar fight. And it's going to come right now. In order to do this, I want to take a little help from a, from a film from my youth. It's called War Games. It's a film from 1983. And at the very end, it's about uh, uh, gaming nuclear war. And at the very end, the computer program, the computer program that controls all the nuclear weapons has a car has a runs all the different modules on the outcomes and it comes up with this analogy or outcome a strange game the only winning move is not to play now if you don't like that answer you really shouldn't watch this channel because you're going to keep seeing this theme. You don't know that the amount of time that I have spent reading and hearing stories like this, where people senselessly lose their, lose their lives over nothing, over events that they would have literally, he probably, if he had let that go, the coach probably would have forgot about this guy's boorish behavior literally the next day. It wouldn't have had an impact in his life in any way, shape or form. It wouldn't, deprived his family from him being there and you know I, I am not taking away anything from the idiot that did this okay that guy was out of control what I'm trying to tell you is you can only control your response to things okay we are going to have idiots like Ryan Whistler out there who are going to just be drunk they're going to be boorish they're going to do stupid things and it's going to agitate you and you're going to wish you could shut them up but again here's how you roll the dice when you do that it could have gone the other way. What if it had gone the other way? What if they got it in the scuffle and the hockey coach, you know, shifted his weight and then the other guy went down the stairs and brained himself in debt? The outcome would have been the same, meaning one man would have been dead. The other guy would have spent the rest of his life in jail. This great, mild-mannered coach would have spent the rest of his life in jail because once you cross that physical plane, you have no idea how it's going to end. So again, the best way to win a bar fight is not to play. And I know you think you should be able to go to the bars and I know you think you should be able to control people's behaviors, but guess what? You can't just not the way it works. 
And listen, if you think I'm immune to this, if you think like I've lived this life where I just don't participate or anything, check out one of my videos earlier in the series here. I think it's called The Last Time I Used Violence. Um, it is, uh, I'll, I'll make sure they, they put a link to it. And I talked about the last time I rolled the dice and used violence and how, it, what its outcome was. It had a profound outcome on me. It's worth seeing if you haven't seen it. But listen, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Please make comments. Please hit the notification bell and share this with anybody you think needs messages like what we just covered. All the best.